spooky Halloween, everybody! It's me, the devil! <laughs> Actually, it's, um, my name is Rabbit and I use they, them pronouns. If, if you're new to this channel, welcome! And if you're back, welcome back! It's so good to see you again! Um, regardless, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And today, I wanted to film a video, uh, basically teaching you how to knit, um, and all about how I make my like big blankets like this one that I'm sitting on here and like pillow covers and stuff so I've just made 49 squares to make a pillow cover for my current project um, and we're gonna see and um, I'm gonna make the 50th one um, today like show you how to knit a square and basically walk you guys through the process of putting it all together and then showing you the final result um, I learned to knit um, probably in like fifth or sixth grade um, in Waldorf schools <laughs> and it's a really fun pastime and I highly recommend it. So um, to get started I'm going to talk about materials that I like to use. So the first thing is knitting needles. I like to use like very large knitting needles for these projects. I'll show you a square. This is like one single square that um, I knit and and I'm making a pillow cover for this pillow um, that's all like kind of pastel and will match this blanket that's usually on my boyfriend and I's bed so um, this is a square it looks like this um, okay so knitting needles these ones are 10 millimeters and I got them at the thrift store but the brand is Arrow England Arrow England and um, I definitely recommend going to the thrift store to get your knitting needles because they are way cheaper and you'd be surprised how many people start knitting projects and then never finish them and then you can benefit from that. So big knitting needles make the project go by a lot faster because you get these like big chunky squares. The other thing that I like to do with them when I knit, that I like to do when I knit is use multiple balls of yarn at a time. This also makes it go by faster and makes um, the squares a lot like thicker and have all these like really beautiful different colors. So I'll show you what I've gotten so far. We got this stack, this stack, and this stack. So as you can tell there's like all these different colors and textures and that's what I really um, like to do. Um, I basically always just achieve that by using multiple different yarns and I get all of my yarns from the thrift store, so it's always like mix and matching. So, fuck. All right, even the devil gets yarn caught on their lip ring sometimes, it's okay. What you're gonna wanna do to start is you line up all the yarn you wanna use, and I'm using just like three different um, pink yarns right now. Just put them on the ground. Um, I tie them all in a regular knot at the end and then tie like a slip knot, I guess you would call it. So you just wrap the yarn around your finger and then pull it through a loop. You know, it's very basic, I think. It's okay if you don't know it, but that's like a pretty simple knot. Okay, so once that's there, you put it on your knitting needle and then you put your second one through the entire, so you put your um, needle through so you have both things of yarn in one and then you wrap the long piece of yarn around the needle you just put through. And once that's wrapped around, this is hard to explain. Then you push it down with this finger, poke it through the piece of yarn at the bottom, and then you pick up that stitch and loop it onto the first needle. And you keep doing that. So this part's from my perspective. You um, put the needle through the yarn, wrap the tail around, and then the first needle goes into the yarn of the first needle and then it gets looped again. So you can see it a lot more clearly from this angle and I'm trying to slow it down so it's easier to see and to replicate. I hope that helps. You put the first needle into the loop of yarn that is already there 
Then you take the tail end of the yarn and wrap it around the needle you just put in. Then that tail end becomes the stitch that you push like down and through and then put it onto the the needle that already has all the stitches. And you just continue this um, until you have the desired number of stitches. Until you have, in my case, 15 stitches. Uh, but I just kind of arbitrarily make the, like, choose the number of um, stitches that I want to use. Like, I'm like, oh, this will be like a good size square or whatever. And I just knit it until it's a square. And I knit a bunch of them that are the same size. And then I kind of figure out, like, how many of those fit onto the project that I'm trying to make. Like, whether it's a blanket or a pillow cover or whatever it is. And then I just stitch them together. And I'll show you how I stitch them together once I finish the square. Um... But yeah, you're, I don't know, I hope, I, I'm like not explaining it very well. <clears throat> okay, now once you have the decided number of stitches on your knitting needle, you're going to want to make your second row. And then you're going to do the same thing for all the rows from there until you're ready to cast off. So how you go from there is you go in with both needles again, wrap the yarn around like the first time, put the needle through the, the hole like the first time and then just slip it off and that's it and it's on here and then you do that with the next one and just keep on going until you get to the end of the line and then you just keep doing it for the whole time um, so we're just gonna speed through that real quick so I don't know how everyone else's quarantine Halloweens have been going, but it's been weird for sure. Like, I don't know, if you're not new to my channel, no. If you don't know me, I don't know. If you can't tell, Halloween's kind of my, my favorite time of year and the only holiday I care about. So it's kind of been the first time that, and, and like I'm not a social person that goes out a lot, so this is the first time that, um, that the fact that we've been in quarantine has kind of like hit me hard um because for a while like after i graduated school and stuff and was just like at home before like my job opened back up and stuff it was just like oh this is like just weird limbo time and like it's weird but i can handle it and nothing was really that different because i usually just stay inside and don't see that many people so you know whatever but but now it's halloween and it's like oh <laughs> like not having the option to do all the fun and spooky things is a weird thing so i don't know what are the halloween traditions you guys are gonna do this year or ones that you miss and that you are excited to do once things <laughs> oh she's so cute tuna's the best uh once things like i don't know start evening out again i don't know what the right word is for it because who knows when the new normal is going to be if that's going to be a thing but um what i used to do is i used to always go to to like halloween like haunted house kind of things in october there's like a big one in the city where i'm from and i would go like since i was a teenager with like friends every year and just get spooked and stuff and I'd have and I had like a lot of like gothy kind of friends that would work at those haunted houses and stuff so it was always like really fun to see them get psyched up for the season and whatever I think my brother yeah my brother worked at one for a while um so those are a thing that I'm missing last year my boyfriend and I went to his friend's house and there were, and we had like a little like 10 person maybe less person party we just played board games and that was super fun but this year my boyfriend and I are staying in and watching movies for Halloween. Um, I haven't been able to find lots of the ones that I would like to watch, you know, um, on the streaming platforms that I'm used to, like, um, like Netflix and stuff. Um, and I haven't been able to locate some of them at thrift stores either, so that's been um, a bummer. But I have found some other ones which are like new favorites, I guess, like I watched. Um, what did I watch the other day? Oh, Practical Magic. That was really cool. I found a DVD of and watched that. Found a DVD of Hocus Pocus and watched that. That was good. Um, 
I watched The Count of Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. I should be able to say that better considering I'm Italian, but like, yeah. Um, that one was really fun. It wasn't really Halloween-y, but it did get me... I don't know. It was a little spooky. Um, then my boyfriend and I last night watched um, The Village. The Villager? The, the M. Night Shyamalan one. With, like the red red cloaked beasts with the long fingernails and that whole thing yeah we watched that i wasn't i don't know it was of course like there was the twist that is in all his movies and stuff and all of it wow but just like the portrayal of mental illness in halloween movies i mean i never have that high or like a spooky movies i never have that high expectations for but somehow i'm always disappointed still (laughs) Um, so, I don't know, instead to get in the mood of spooky stuff, I've been watching lots of other YouTube content, like, um, Bailey Sarian and her murder mystery makeup, and Jade the Libra, and Raven Rye, and, like, just different, like, spooky makeup, like, I know a lot of brands do spooky makeup every year, so I know there was, like, a Nightmare Before Christmas palette, like a hocus pocus palette and these kinds of things i didn't buy any of them but it's always good to see the halloween spirit infiltrating capital is it i don't know um but yeah i also got to decorate with my boyfriend so that was fun and at the grocery store the other day he got a pumpkin cheese like a vegan daya pumpkin cheesecake so that was exciting I'm like not that big of a fan of cheesecake but at the cafe I work at we have like apple ciders and stuff now there's one with like maple and stuff and it's so good we have this like tortoiseshell macchiato which macchiato but with chocolate syrup on it so it looks like a tortoiseshell cat because I work at a cat cafe and it's the best um probably just gonna speed through the rest of this square I'm back, but I didn't feel like wearing my corset anymore. Okay, so we're got enough of a square. And here's the thing, they stretch a lot. Like, as you can see this blanket, um, these this started a lot smaller and then just over time of using it, it like stretched out a lot because it's a very heavy blanket, which is a big reason that I like these knitted kind of things because it feels like a weighted blanket basically on top of your regular one but we've got one and basically the way that i tell it's done is if i can like fold it over and it like is a good triangle then we're good so then you're ready to cast off and how you do that is you put the needle in you wrap around you collect the stitch and then you do that again (laughs) sorry and once you have two on there, you just pull the the back one over the first one, over the needle, and that's good. And then you do that again for all of the stitches until you've cast off everything. It's very simple, you know, just repetitive motions. Um, I started these squares behind me like um oh man i don't even know how long ago i started them but i like really intensely was doing them for the last couple days so i don't know maybe it took me like two weeks or a week to do all of these guys and i just like hang out and do them like while i watch tv or like while i'm waiting for stuff in the oven or like whatever um back when i was in school i would always bring my knitting needles to class and i would just knit in class um, when I used to take like the bus or whatever, um, also great time to knit. So there's always times, you know, some people read, some people go on their phones, you can always knit. So that's that. And then once you have the last one, you just take it off and you have this little loop, you grab your scissors, you cut, um, enough of the tail that you have like a little bit, and then you take the tail And I just like to put it into the loop, tie it off, 
and then tie it a couple times to make sure it is secure. And that is how you make a square. So once you have enough of them, that you're ready to sew it all together. Or the first thing you're gonna wanna do is lay out all the squares that you have in the order that you want them. And as you can see, these are uh, the ones I have. I like to usually do them in a gradient um, from dark to light and from blue to pink because that's what um, my blanket looks like. You can't see the back of it because it's tucked behind, but I'll insert a picture. And this is the pillow that it will be going on. And as you can see, it's about the same size. Okay, so to sew the squares together, I'm using a very large needle um, and some embroidery thread. You can also use floss or regular thread, but I like embroidery thread because it's thick and um, tends to hold it together. Though to be completely honest, I do have to do some repairs occasionally on my big um, blanket, but it's not that hard. Usually takes a couple minutes, like every few months. Um, so I don't consider it a huge problem. Uh, because sewing's pretty quick. Okay, so we're gonna thread the needle, tie it off. I like to double, um, like use double thread in this way, and then tie it at the end so that we are extra reinforced. And then I just pick up two squares that are meant to be sewn together, and I line up their edges so they're like sandwiched. And I just do some real quick um, whip stitches along the edge that I would like them to be connected on. So um, basically start by pulling the needle through both of them together at once and um, put the needle through the thread to catch it. That's how I like secure it at the end. And then literally you just, sorry for the sirens. You just puncture, pull, <laughs> you just poke your needle through the two pieces of yarn at once and pull the thread through. And that's just like a super easy whip stitch. It, um, it's very simple, very fast. Um, you can always do it in both directions so it like does a crisscross pattern and stays extra reinforced. Um, I recommend doing that on blankets, but pillow covers tend to not move around as much as blankets, so I'm not really that worried about this one. Um, and then once they're together, they're sewn, you can tie that off by like, you know, you put the needle through, you just put the thread through the needle again, like that, and then tie it or cut it. And then these two are together. And then I will pull up another square and then attach it here and then another one and attach it here and so on and so forth. Um, so we're just gonna do that then and speed on through. Okay, so now these guys are sewn together like the square parts are. So we're just going to um, attach them to each other and then they'll be a pillow cover essentially. So let's sew them together. I just left one 
section open to put the pillow into. And um, I'm probably going to attach some buttons to close it at the bottom, but for now, I'm hungry so I'm gonna go make some dinner. So I ended up actually just securing the top with some little um, yarn bows. Just used some scrap fabric because I was feeling kind of lazy at the time that I finished it. Might change it later, but for now, we are happy with it. I know, Lan. Um, that's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and watching till the end. I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope you have an awesome, happy, safe Halloween or Samhain or whatever you celebrate. Uh, bye for now. And uh, if you could like and subscribe if you like this video, please, please feel free. Um, bye.